I'm Rachel Hogg Graham, and I'm an assistant professor in the College of Health Sciences. So during my doctorate in public health here at UK, I worked with Dr. Glenn Mays, who now runs the Systems for Action Research Center. And there they did a lot of work looking at the types of organizations that work together to make population health better. So I became really interested in understanding how, especially organizations like hospitals and physicians, traditional clinical providers, work toward population health goals. Health Affairs is really the leading health policy journal out there. And in particular, this issue was funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and was really focused on creating a culture of health. The article was using data on community health networks from the partner tool. So this is the program to analyze, record, and track networks to enhance relationships. And what we did was really dig in on this data to find out, you know, a couple different things, including what types of organizations are working in community health networks. And the partner tool asked some really interesting questions on trust and value and resources contributed. One thing that we found in this article and some of the other research we've done that trust and value are incredibly important to these networks and how you perceive those partners. So we know that partnership is about perception. So bringing all those members to the table and getting them on the same page. And we dive into that in the paper some and find that you've really got to get everybody on the same page and understanding what common goals are, what a common mission is, and how each of those organizations define success so you can talk about those different pieces and keep them engaged. So that's what's really cool about the partner tool and what it was originally developed for by my co-author Danielle Varda is for these networks to use it to look at each other, look at how they're functioning. So they can look to our research as a start, but I really encourage networks that are invested in trying to figure out how these relationships work, who's wearing what hats, where they might need to work on defining value, where they might need to work on increasing trust to use the partner tool. And we had, I think about 260 communities that we looked at, it was a pretty broad sample. So we had people all across the US. We had some very rural communities in South Dakota to much larger metropolitan communities on the East Coast. So that's one thing we'd like to look at too, is how are there differences based on where these communities are? We know that rural is very different and what organizations might be important in a rural community may be different than in an urban community or even in the very large urban communities, there may be multiple networks. So the big next step is figuring out what exactly is going on in these communities beyond just that trust and value, but also how are they working together? How do these arrangements come together? What types of services are being provided? When you're going to the hospital and you have somebody come in and perhaps they have a substance abuse issue, often that clinical encounter can't deal with that appropriately. So how can we get the local health department to perhaps connect then to these other organizations? A big piece of this is also understanding that what works one place for one person doesn't work for the other. So we're hoping to do some um, comparative effectiveness work looking at the different models and population groups and what seems to make sense so that we can help almost create a template. I think increasingly, you know, we see that we're not getting a lot for what we spend on health care in the United States. And a big part of that is that we don't focus on population health or primary care. We're a very reactionary health care system. But to make that population health goal actually work, it's understanding those organizations that are coming together because it's often in communities, not the hospital where they're getting that care, where they're going and you know having that clinical encounter, but perhaps that clinical encounter can't help them with other factors like housing, food deserts, um, not even being able to get transportation to medical care. So looking at these other organizations and thinking about what role each of them play. And in part, you know, traditionally, it's been the local governmental public health agency that's driven these things. But I see that changing and them really being able to play a role as a convener to bring together the different people in that puzzle that will make it work. And to really, you know, decrease what we're spending on health care, I, I believe that we're going to have to focus on these things more than we have in the past.